Okay, so this is a country that everybody needs, but that nobody really likes. Sup guys, welcome back to Nations of Minecraft, and today's nation is Hyperland. Hyperland is known worldwide as the Redstone Country, which is why everybody needs it. Since the vast majority of people don't know anything about Redstone, it's a lot cheaper to outsource all of their Redstone projects to Hyperland. So that's why everybody needs them. Now let's talk about why most people don't like them. Hyperland is located right here in the east, which is where it gets its name, since Hyperion means east. So there are two main reasons people don't really like it. The first reason is that there's a general aesthetic of ugliness. It's kind of like, since it's a redstone country, a lot of the space needs to be used for redstone projects, some of them that fail and some of them that are half finished. So uh, a lot of the country is treated like a junkyard. And as a result, nobody really puts much effort into architecture. Also, um, the landscape is kind of ugly too. The landscape is terrible for farming, and a lot of the settlements that do exist have been abandoned or bombed or both. So yeah, if there's ugliness all around, there's not much of a motivation to create anything pretty. So yeah, the, the landscape is very unwelcoming for farming, which is kind of why it's the Redstone Province, since there's a lot of land that can't really be used for anything else. So it's used for like redstone experiments. And it's useful, but once again, not very pretty. So another reason that a lot of people don't like it is because there's a great problem of wealth inequality. Most of the country is controlled by a handful of redstone corporations that um, don't really treat their workers well. The workers generally live in very small, uh, poor towns and harsh factory conditions whereas the corporate owners and the government elites, who are just their puppets, live in super big houses and shiny skyscrapers with air conditioning. So, yeah, and um, this country up here, Hanakwa, once tried to, like, stage a, stage a worker strike um, to get back for something Hyperlin did to them a while ago, but it didn't work because... Um, the only way any of these people get food is from the corporation, since they can't really grow any in the terrible land of this country. So Hyperland itself is not a republic, because it's made up of two republics, the Republic of North Hyperland and the Republic of South Hyperland. The capital of North Hyperland is Chopperville, and the capital of South Hyperland is Matricon. So generally, North Hyperland is used more for, like, the creative redstone engineering projects and experimentation, whereas the South Hyperland is more industrial, and that's where a lot of the redstone materials are built. In the city of Matricon, there are a lot of factories, and most of the world's repeaters, comparators, and hoppers and other redstone equipment is manufactured here. So um, the reason there are two republics is because, well, first of all, there was a historical divide between the North and the South, but when Hyperland became its own country, they wanted to elect a president, so the North elected this northern guy to be president, the South elected this southern guy to be president. They couldn't agree on who won, so they were about to split up into two separate countries, but then this third guy was like, hey, wait, no, that'll be terrible for the economy. Why don't we just ha have two presidents in two republics and then have a chancellor that's chosen by both presidents? And they all agreed that it wouldn't be good for the economy if they split, so they agreed on that, and conveniently, the guy who proposed it became the first chancellor, and North and South Hyperland were each their own republics with their own presidents. And uh, each republic had a capital city, but the capital of the whole country was Manplatten. Now, Manplatten, the city, is also the capital of Manplatten, the country. It's one city that's the capital of two different countries. We'll talk more about that in the Manplatten episode. But yeah, so Hyperland as a whole is known as the Federation of Hyperland, made up of two republics. So this is a map of the biomes. One pretty cool thing they did recently is this sand river, which was a dry riverbed, was converted back into a canal, so that way uh, the Deestan River could have access to the Hyperion Ocean. But yeah, other than that, most of the land is pretty much useless for farming, which is why it's used for redstone experimentation. Uh, so a lot of the biomes include things like desert, shrubland, dead fields, badlands, and acacia, all which are pretty dry. 
Uh, the only non-dry biome is they have a little bit of the jungle, but that wasn't historically part of Hyperland. They gained that territory pretty recently, and not many people live here. And there's also one bamboo forest little one here, but it's protected as a national park. So yeah, generally all you need to know about the biomes is they suck for farming, but that makes them good for redstone. So this is a population map. Uh, as you can see, their biggest population centers are the city of Matricon here, the city of Manplatten here, and this is Chopperville. And most people live in this sort of light orange area. Most people are kind of dispersed along trade routes because that's where a lot of the factories and resource gathering villages are and where the fields, the experimentation fields are. So a good number of people live in the cities, but a good number of people also live um, in the factories and the industrial parts. Some people refer to Hyperland as like an industrial wasteland and not to be offensive, but it's kind of true. So yeah. Now this is a temperature map. Most of Hyperland is quite hot. There's a very hot, hot part, especially in the, in the center south. And it gets a little bit cooler as you go north, but um, it's still pretty warm. Hyperland overall is one of the hottest countries. This is a humidity map, a rainfall map. Most of Hyperland is completely dry with basically no rain. It gets a little bit more humid if you get close to the Deestan River. And the only wet part is the jungle. But once again, very few people actually live there. Now this is a language map. There are two languages spoken in Hyperland. The North Hyperland speaks Deestant and South Hyperland speaks Canaan. Uh, neither of these languages are native to Hyperland. Hyperland doesn't have a native language. They chose the languages for economic reasons. The reason the North speaks Deestant is because all of these countries speak Deestant as a first or second language, and the South speaks Canaan because they're right next to Canaia, and they do a lot of trade with Canaia, so they took their language and learned it. So yeah, North speaks Deestant, South speaks Canaan, and that's it. It's pretty simple. Now, here's the history of Hyperland. Historically, there were no ancient tribes that lived here in what's now known as Hyperland. It, all there were were like proto-eastern nomads in the north and proto-southern nomads in the south. So there, were, there was always kind of a divide between the north and the south. And um, this was referred to by many people as the uninhabitable lands because of how bad the, uh, the land was for any sort of uh, agriculture. Eventually, the Deestan Empire took over half the world, and they tried to make a few farming colonies here, because that was what they were good at, but the colonies failed. Uh, and Emperor Deistan is quoted saying, This investment has been the greatest waste of money in the history of the empire. So yeah, that didn't work very well. So fast forward like a hundred or so years, and the Green Plateau and Blue Plateau are in a civil war. Don't worry about this, that's irrelevant. Um, now, as you can see, the area that's now known as Hyperland was the space in between the capital of the Green Plateau and the capital of the Blue Plateau, and as a result, it was kind of a war zone. Since it was a war zone, it was a space where we needed to make a lot of weapons, where both sides needed to make weapons, and combine that with the fact that the land is useless for anything else, so both the Green Plateau and the Blue Plateau began using this land for redstone. They began making TNT cannons and other redstone weapon contraptions. We even made nukes and stuff since we had mods. So both sides called this place Hyperland, and that's why there was North Hyperland, which belonged to the Green Plateau, and South Hyperland, which belonged to the Blue Plateau. So eventually, there was just one time uh, during the war when I had to shoot down an enemy ship, so I told Pinecone 21, who was the governor of North Hyperland, my side, the Redstone province, to build a good TNT cannon for me to use on my ship to shoot down the other ship. And this is where she proved herself. I'm in the ship now, running up. I'm about to act. I'm down, I'm down. Okay, you're down, you're down. Well, I have to activate this. this I'm probably going to regret this decision, but I have to trust Pinecone's Redstone skills. Oh, my tweezers! Oh, that is insane! Oh, what the no, heck? No, 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 no. What? Well, thank you for thank doing you that. Know. This is no, this is the most... I've never seen this much TNT in my life. My Whoa, this... this, this and the remains of the enemy ship are still on display today off the coast of South Hyperland. So eventually, the Green Plateau won the Civil War, partly thanks to Pinecone and her redstone skills. 
and Hyperland unified into one province. It was the Redstone province, of course, and the fields began to be filled with half-finished projects and experiments. Then uh, the Green Plateau fell apart and Hyperland became its own country. And then all this area, including the jungle and uh, the former Green Plateau, were divided up among these neighboring countries. Hyperland didn't get that much of the jungle, but they did get the whole city of Manplatten, which was very useful for them. Then, uh, so yeah, they Manplatten became their capital city because that's where the Chancellor decided to live. Then, during uh, the next... A uh, few decades, they just began trading redstone and outsourcing redstone to all these other countries, and they didn't form any alliances because they wanted to be able to trade with everyone. So when the Great Durlan War started, Hyperlin didn't take a side. Rather, they sold weapons to both sides. So, yeah, nice job, Hyperlin. Uh, then Manplatten, the state of Manplatten became independent, and they decided they wanted the city of Manplatten back, so they fought for it, and they took half of it. I'll explain more about that again in the Manplatten video. But basically, they came to a uh, ceasefire, and they agreed to share the city. So yeah, since then, not much history has happened. Uh, Hyperland mostly remains neutral, because once again, they, try, they need to try and sell to everyone. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So, if you choose to visit, some top notable sites might include the University of Hyperland, which has a very large field. There's the Castle of Chopperville in the capital of North Hyperland. Uh, this is where a lot of the great redstone thinkers live, and they have these fields to experiment in. Uh, there's the Hanging Tower, which is where they hang thieves. Yeah, this is quite a deterrent. It's kind of disturbing. Um, there's this redstone elevator, the first redstone elevator in the world, in the city of East Manplatten, which is really just the east part of Manplatten. There are the houses of the CEOs. The leaders of the corporations live in very, very fancy houses, some of the fanciest in the world, whereas the workers live in, like, tiny shacks. And, uh, there's this orchestra building which used to uh, belong to just Manplatten, but in Hyperland owns half of Manplatten. Uh, there's Mount Olympus, another part of Manplatten. A lot of the stuff that's in Hyperland is really just stuff that used to belong to Manplatten, and Hyperland owns half of Manplatten. And of course, there's uh, the Capitol building of Hyperland, a shiny tall glass tower with a military bunker underneath and some military beds and cannons in the tower. And there's the Hyperland Courthouse in the tower as well, and the Chancellor's Office, which is at the very top of the tower. This whole tower actually used to be the capital building of the entire Green Plateau. There was the Green Plateau and this building, which was like the legislative capital, because it was in Manplatten. So yeah, a lot of things that belong to Hyperland are just things that used to belong to Manplatten. They weren't necessarily created by Hyperland. So, this thing was created by Hyperlin. There's a toilet in uh, Matricom. Just, just a toilet. And also, uh, there's this one guy, this one uh, CEO, instead of making a fancy elaborate house in East Manplatten, he decided to make sort of a naturey house in the jungle built into this hill. So, it's a really, really nice place. Uh, it's run by this horse who, yeah, just built a very naturey looking house. So, as we mentioned before, Hyperlin generally stays neutral in terms of foreign relations, but these days there's kind of an exception to that. So, as I explained before, they absolutely hate Hanakwa. Hanakwa is their archenemy. Now, Hanakwa is best friends with Claytonia, and Claytonia is allies with Durlan, and of course Durlan and Iapeta have this huge war, so technically that means... Hyperland and Iapeta are now friends. Hyperland doesn't really get involved in the Iapeta Durlan conflict because, once again, they need to maintain um, good relations with most people. But the Chancellor has come out in favor of Iapeta as opposed to Durlan. And that's kind of okay since Durlan is one of the few countries that actually can do their own redstone. So Durlan never was really buying from Hyperland to begin with. Now, uh, South Hyperland 
is really good friends with Kanaya, even though Kanaya sides with Durlon. They're especially good friends with North Kanaya, since North Kanaya is less fond of Durlon than South Kanaya. And since South Hyperland speaks Kanayan, they're just really good friends, really big fans of Kanaya. Now, Men Platten is kind of like begrudgingly friends with Hyperland. Since they share the same capital city, they kind of have to get along, even though they don't really love each other. But generally, overall, Hyperland, aside from Hanakwa, doesn't really hate anyone. And aside from the South liking Kanaya, they don't really love anyone either. They're, they just do business with anyone, even though not many people like them that much. In conclusion, Hyperland is like that nerdy kid who's not that popular, but everyone still goes to him when they need help with their math homework. Stay tuned. The big guy, Ayapeda, is coming up next. <laughs>